What a year guys, 2019 was definitely the most dense year gaming wise and I couldn't be more happy and grateful for everyone that I shared the table with, all the games that I played and all the events that I hosted or attended. My name is Oli and you are watching Oli Plays A Lot. If you enjoy board game related content then make sure to subscribe to the channel and give a thumbs up to this video. As the title says, I will be covering the top 5 new to me games of 2019. If you're interested only in that part, check the timestamp in the description below so you can skip the chit chat. Before we jump into the list, I want to recap what my 2019 looked like. I obviously couldn't talk about last year without mentioning that in May I got married to my beautiful sissy. Of course, we added some board game flavor to the wedding, I took a couple of photos in front of my old board game shelf, had the guests sign a big Carcassonne map, and even took a couple of pictures post-wedding with the amazing Wingspan. Being married means that we spend more time together playing, and also whenever I want to go to play with my friends, I need her consent. Sissy, please let me play with the guys. In summer, I co-hosted the 5th Yatek Tonya, which is Romania's largest board game camp. 7 straight days of gaming means little to no sleep, lots of tabletop games, many friends, and a big amount of laughter. I'm eagerly looking forward to the camp in 2020, and I will definitely cover it on the channel as well. A couple months later, on the first weekend of November, I attended Romania's largest board game convention called Zilele Jocurilor or Board Game Days. Aside from being at the boot of Yatsma slash Ludicus, the board game store that I work at, I had the opportunity to join a panel discussion with two Romanian vloggers, Bogi Sejoaca and Prodi Place, and we talked about the future of vlogging in Romania. You should definitely check these guys out, they post content in Romanian, so if you know the language you will have the opportunity to learn about a lot of new uh, games. I left their link in the description below. Again, thank you for the invitation. Now, the coolest thing at the convention was definitely the board game zone. Well over 100 people were playing at the same time, gamers were teaching newbies uh, games from Essen, uh, designers were exhibiting their prototypes or their finished products and that right there was simply magical. And I congratulate each and every one, especially Mihai, the main organizer of the event, for such a successful convention. To many more. Now fast forward to the 14th of December when I hosted the first edition of the Oli Plays A Lot Board Game Day. Hooray! Well over 50 people joined the event and I was so happy to see so many of my friends coming and I saw even families whom I wasn't expecting coming and playing Azul the whole day. It was so fun and I will definitely organize some events so keep an eye on my channel. If you are in the zone on that particular day then just come say hi and play a game with me. And now let's talk a bit about my stats for 2019. I track all my gaming sessions with Scorpel. It's an app that I recommend to everyone who is taking gaming seriously. I have been using this app for over two years now and love it because it has a user-friendly interface. It syncs your sessions to the BGG database and helps you analyze your plays afterwards. And also it has these cute avatars people can choose one from. Aww. So sweet. My collection more than doubled last year after adding 69 titles to it and at the end of December I had 104 games not counting uh, expansions or promo cards, just the base game. As you could imagine my shelf of shame or shelf of opportunity as some of you like to call it grew substantially and it will be one of my goals to bring it down to less than 10% of my collection or even zero. Last year I played 450 times 174 different titles from which 124 were new to me. I played only 28 games more than once which means that I was really struggling with my 10x10 challenge and this is a stat that I want to improve this year. Ring the bells, we are down to the top list. After analyzing all the games that I have played, I shortlisted 20 titles 
and from these I will choose my top 5. Next to each title you can see the number of times that I played it and at the moment the list is in an alphabetical order and I will be counting down the titles and rearranging them starting with number 5. Underwater Cities is an amazing worker placement or door placement game if you want to call it that way in which you are trying to make the underwater area livable. It completely replaced Terraforming Mars for me, which is a great engine and tableau building game with huge replay value and awful art, which I still like but would never pick over Underwater Cities. The number 5 on this list comes with great components and an easy set of rules. You place a worker, play a card, and make one or two actions and then just pass your turn to the player on your left. The challenge is to have a card that matches the action space that you placed your worker at because then you can do not only one but two actions. This means that sometimes you'll reconsider placing a worker to a space that is finally free because the cards sway you in a different direction. Other times, the space that you can place your worker at is so much worth it that you don't care what color your cards are. The double layered player boards from the New Discoveries expansions are a must and I would never play with those flimsy player boards that come in the base game. So definitely consider investing into the expansion if you are thinking about buying Underwater Cities, the fifth best new to be game of 2019. When I first played Raiders of the North Sea, I was blown away by the cool twist Shen Phillips added to the conventional idea of the worker placement mechanism. If I recall it correctly, it was called a single worker placement or a singular worker placement, something like that, because you only had one worker. You always had to place a worker, do the action, then take back your worker and do that action as well. So when I heard that Shem is working on another trilogy, I was eagerly looking forward to playing it. And last year I had the chance to put both Architects of the West Kingdoms and Paladins of the West Kingdoms on the table. Given that I have played Paladins only once, I just couldn't include it in my top 5, but it reached spot number 8 and its eldest brother Architects reached number 8. Four. Architects of the West Kingdom is definitely a game that you can play with gamers and non-gamers as well. Sham gave yet another twist to the worker placement mechanism because instead of slowly unlocking more and more workers as the game progresses, you start with all of your meeples from the get-go. Also, it's interesting how workers communicate between them. The more meeples you have at an action spot, the more powerful that action is. Another aspect that I really enjoy is that players control when the game ends and after 2-3 games you kind of see who will trigger the end of the game by placing their meeple in the last available building space. The game was stunningly illustrated by the Miko, an artist from whom I have a handful of games and I'm so happy that he's working with Sham on the next titles that are coming in the West Kingdom trilogy. Too many more guys. One of last year's most played and most cherished games was Cryptid. A title that I didn't know much about before buying it and mainly got it because of its art. You may have realized that I'm a sucker for great art. It didn't make the cut for the top 5 new to me games of 2019 because I have played it previously in 2018 but it made me curious about another title that most of my gamer friends compared it to and that is Tobago, the third best new to me game of 2019. Unlike Encrypted, here you are not only searching for something, you are also defining its location during the game and this extra layer makes the game feel like you are telling a story. Players are placing cards that either dictate where a treasure can or cannot be. With every subsequent card you must reduce the number of possibilities until there is only one possible field for the treasure's location. You then race there with your little wooden car to pick the treasure up and distribute it between those who helped in finding it. Knowing when and where to play a card, which amulet to pick up and how to use it and where to end your movement is key to winning the game. Is there luck involved? 
Undeniably, yes. But Tobago is so greatly infused in this treasure hunting team that on one hand I can accept the presence of luck and on the other hand I don't really care what the outcome is as far as I am immersed in this game's wonderful world. The replay value of the game is humongous because the modular board pieces are double sided and you can place them next to each other however you want to. The houses, palm trees and statues which by the way look superb are placed randomly at the beginning of the game and you have little to no idea where in the deck the two curse cards are placed. All in all Tobago is a beautiful gem from 2009 which I have discovered only 10 years later and will definitely be playing in the following 10 years. The silver medal goes to a game that I have received as a gift from my secret Santa, a game with a strong Carcassonne vibe. Acro Theory. Acro? Acro? Acro Theory? Acro! What's your name, man? When I first played it, I was pleasantly surprised by how well its mechanisms merge and the game sucked me into its own world where I was an explorer searching for long lost temples. To do so I spent action points to buy map cards at Terra, the central island, expanded the map by placing tiles, picked up and delivered goods to earn money and played cards to excavate temples. Acrotiri's beauty lies in its simplicity. This is a game that can be set up, explained and played in under one hour but it has a certain strategic depth. Recently we were having a conversation at the game night that although we buy these long heavy brain melting board games at the end of the day we all enjoy sitting at the table and playing such games as Acro Theory. There was also another thing that I found interesting in Acro Theory and I haven't found in many other board games the fact that your position relative to the board mattered a lot. There were certain cards that you couldn't play but your opponent could have played if he had the card you owned. So all in all Acro Theory is my second best new to me games of 2019. And now the big winner of 2019, the game that I most enjoyed from the above mentioned list and also my most awaited Kickstarter project, Rome. Created by Ryan Lockett, one of the designers and illustrators I most respect and set in Arzium, a land familiar from other Red Raven game titles such as Above and Below, Near and Far and Islebound, Rome is the title that I played and taught the most often from the company. Understandably because it literally takes no time to set up and under 5 minutes to teach. The goal of the game is to gather 10 adventurers under your banner. You all start with the same hand of 3 cards, activate characters and use artifact abilities to mark different spots on the maps in an effort to have the majority when all spaces are covered so that you receive the map card and with it the lost adventurer. As in Acro Theory, your position relative to the board matters a lot because you can only place markers in a certain pattern. I always ask my friends to name their characters when they use them and laugh out loud because of the humorous flavor text that's on the back of each artifact card. I, I cannot praise Rome enough for its simplicity and also depth. The replay value is huge. You always have a different map and that map changes throughout the game. As you discover or as you find these adventurers you take out that card and replace it with another. Of course first you only see the map part and when you take it then you see the character and this also adds to that feeling of finding someone, of recruiting someone to your tribe. Red Raven Games Latest Gem is an abstract game at its core and its artistic location clothes give it the flavor I cannot get enough. These were the top 5 games of 2019 for me and I'm super excited to see what 2020 is bringing us. With so many new games coming out each year and so many classics that I haven't played I truly believe that this year will be 
my best so far gaming wise. And now I'm curious about your thoughts. Leave a comment in the section below with the titles that you enjoyed the most in 2019 and the ones that you are looking forward to playing this year. My name is Oli and you have been watching Oli Plays A Lot. Until next time, happy gaming, bye! First episode of season one done. Now, let's sleep.